Module 2, Lesson 15, The Division Algorithm, Converting Decimal Division into Whole Number Division Using Mental Math. That is a mouthful of lesson title there. Really what this lesson is, is looking at some fun mental math strategies and exploring some things that we can do with division and mental math. So I can use mental math strategies to solve for quotients of multi-digit decimals. I can use powers of 10 to explain where to place the decimal in quotients of multi-digit decimals. We do end up with those I can statements, but most of the lesson is just exploring mental math strategies that we can use. So here are some mental math um, exercises, um, some things that we can try out here. Um, so this is an addition problem. We can do some compensation. Uh, we could take 1 from the 44 and make it a 43, and we can move that 1 over to the 99 and have 100 plus 43, and we get 143. Nice little compensation strategy that we can use for addition. Here we have a subtraction problem, 86 minus 39, and a strategy that we can use is we can increase both parts of the subtraction, subtraction problem, the menu end and subterhand, we can increase them by the same amount. So for example, if I add 1 to each one of them, I'll have 87 minus 40. And now instead of having to regroup, I have a mental math problem here where I can find a difference of 47. Looking at the multiplication here, um, there are some things that are a little bit more complex, um, but pretty cool. Um, and we've kind of looked at these in some of the last lessons, um, but not very explicitly, not very directly. Um, if I multiply the 50 times 2 and I divide the 14 by 2, I will get 100 times 7, which will give me 700, which if we multiply 50 times 14, we get 700. So with the multiplication, if I multiply 1 by a number and divide the other factor by the same number, I will get the same product. With division, and we've explored this the last couple of lessons, as long as I multiply them both by the same number, I'll be good. So instead of dividing by 5, wouldn't it be nice to divide by 10? And I double the 180 and get 360 and get 36. So just some quick mental math strategies that you may or may not be familiar with. All right, so taking a look here, um, example 1, using mental math to find quotients. Now, we've been doing a lot of stuff with powers of 10, multiplying times 10, multiplying times 100, multiplying by 1,000, so that we can remove the decimals from the divisors. And we've really been focused on powers of 10, but the question becomes, are powers of 10 the only way we can utilize this strategy? Or are there other ways that we can put this multiply both numbers by the same thing and get the same quotient? And in our fraction form that we were working with the other day, could I do something like this? Double the 105, get 210. Double the 35 and get 70. And now I have a nice mental math problem. built off of a fact with which I am familiar. So we can utilize this strategy of multiplying the dividend and divisor by the same number with any numbers that we would like to, as long as we multiply the dividend and the divisor by the same number, we will get the same quotient. Now we can create some tape diagrams to see what's going on here. And 
for the tape diagrams. We'll work with an easy one here, 25 divided by 5. We know that the quotient will be 5. So here is our 25. And we're using a measurement interpretation of division here. How many 5s are there in 25? Well, if we double the value of each of the 5s, we would have 10 in each one, and we would have 50. So 50 divided by 10 would give us 5, and 25 divided by 5 would give us 5. The difference between these two division problems, 50 divided by 10 and 25 divided by 5, the only difference is the 50 is double the 25, and the 10 is double the 5. That's the difference. The quotients are the same, but we have multiplied the dividend and divisor by the same number. So if we were to put this into a conjecture form, we would maybe say something like, um, I can multiply, oh, cam, how about can? The dividend and divisor by the same number and get the same quotient. And I'm going to run out of room. And I'm sorry about that. So I've got this idea here that if I take the dividend and divisor and multiply them both by the same number, I will get the same quotient. All right, so taking a look here, um, some mental math strategies, um, looking at 770 divided by 14 and asking how can we apply our mental math strategy. Um, I notice that both of these are divisible by 7. 770 divided by 14. And when I say divisible by 7, they're easily divisible by 7. So I've got 14 divided by 7, so that scales to be a 2. And 770 divided by 7 gives me 110. And 110 divided by 2 gives me 55. Now I could certainly work with 2s. But I'm not sure that 770 divided by 2 in my head is a very friendly kind of problem. One of the things we look for with mental math strategies are work finding numbers or combinations that are easy to work with in our mind. Mental math. All right. Um, here I see a divided by 5. And when I see divided by 5s, I love them. Because if I know if I double a 5, I have a 10. And 10s are so easy to divide by. And it's easy to double things. So 2,010, double the 1,000, double the 5. And then if I'm going to divide by 10, everything's going to move one place value to the right. So I've got 201. The 1 in the tens place goes to the ones place. The 0 in the hundreds place goes to the tens place. And the 2 in the thousands place goes to the hundreds place. And I get a quotient of 201. So I, I really enjoy seeing fives. Now here we've got eights. Eights aren't quite so fun. Um, but there are some things that I can do here. Um, I know that 8 is divisible by 2. And dividing by 2 isn't very bad. So if I divide by 2, I'll get a 4 and a 750. And I could divide by 2 again. And I would get 2. And this isn't quite as easy to divide by 2. Um, 
but I know that 50 divided by 2 is 25, and this is 700 divided by 2, so 350. So I get a 375. And at this point, um, you know, I'm still stuck with dividing by 2. And, and some of you, this may become more difficult at this point. So the 2 divided by 2 becomes the 1. Um, so I've got two things that need to be divided by 2. And, and this is the way that I think of it. This 375 here, I'm going to split it into 360 and 15. Because 360 is easy for me to divide in my head, and I get 180. And half of 15 is a whole lot easier than 75. So what I've done here is a little bit of breaking apart. And 15 divided by 2 is 7 and a half. So I can combine those and have 187 and a half. And I've done that all as a mental math strategy. So sometimes even with mental math, we might go through multiple steps to get there. And for division I am, and multiplication, I am very fond of splitting numbers apart. All right, oh, another five. I love fives. Fives are awesome. Because if I do a little doubling here, I'm going to have a 10 to divide by, which is just wonderful. I've got 260 here, which doubles to be 520. And then I've got a doubled 1,000, 2,520. Then I can divide by 10 and have 252. I love dividing by, by 5. It is just a fantastic thing. All right, so taking a look at some division with decimals. So we've got 175 divided by 3 and a half. And we're asking ourselves, what can we do to make this problem a little bit easier? Now, what we worked on yesterday is, well, we just multiply by the powers of 10 here, and we get 1,750 divided by 35. But I'm not sure that that has made this problem a whole lot easier to solve. So I'd like to take a look at, what can I do with this 3.5 besides multiplying by 10 to get it to be a whole number? One of the great things about halves is if you double them, you get wholes. So if I take my 3 and 5 tenths and double it, I will have 6 plus 1. The 3 doubled is 6. The 5 tenths doubled is 1, so I've got a 7. I can double the 175. 75 doubled is 150. 100 doubled is... 200. So I've got 200 plus 150, and I've got 350 divided by 7. Now I've got something that's pretty easy to work with. I get a 50. 7 times 50 is 350. So looking at these halves here and saying, oh, I can double those and make holes, might be a better strategic decision than multiplying times 10. So looking at exercise 5, here we have 25 hundredths, which are 1 fourth. If I multiply times 4, then I will have wholes. So if I've got 25 divided by 6 and 25 hundredths, and if I multiply times 4, 4 times 25 hundredths will give me 1 whole, and 4 times 6 gives me 24, and 25 times 4 is 100. I've got 100 divided by 25, which is 4. So instead of multiplying by 100 here and getting 2,500 divided by 625, I can use just a little bit of brain power here and say, if I multiply times 4, these quarters become whole numbers. 
So looking at exercise six, similar kind of situation here. I've got this five tenths, six and three tenths divided by one and five tenths. If I double with this five tenths, then I'll have some whole numbers. So double that and I'll get one and double this and I'll get two, two plus one, which will give me three. I can double the three tenths and get six tenths and double the six and get 12. So I've got 12 and six tenths divided by three. And I kind of like this problem because I've got the 12 that will be divided by 3, and I will combine that with the 6 tenths divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 6 tenths divided by 3 is 2 tenths. I get a quotient of 4 and 2 tenths. So once again, I'm using my strategy here of breaking things apart. All right. Oh, here we go. Here's another... Here's another halves, but I'm looking at this thinking this is 2 and 5 tenths. I could double it. I could do 425 divided by 2 and 5 tenths, and I could double things. And I would have 850 divided by 5, but if I doubled one more time, then I have a divisor of 10. And 800 doubled is 1,600, and 50 doubled is another 100. So I'd have 1,600 plus 100, I'd have 1,700 divided by 10, and dividing by 10 is lovely. And I would get a quotient of 170. So once again, love seeing these halves in the denominator. And as soon as I doubled those halves, I got a 5 there and said, boy, a 10 would sure be nice. Or I could also look at this problem right from the get-go and say that I know that 2 and 5 tenths is 1 fourth of 10. So if I were to multiply times 4, I'd have 10. 4 times 4 is the 16, 1,600, and 4 times 25 is another 100. Now I could divide the 10s out here, and I would have 160 plus 10, which is 170. So a different way of looking at it. All right, taking a look at a, another example here. So working our way through the division algorithm, So applying kind of what we've used here, we've got 4,564 divided by 3 and 5 tenths. I could, instead of multiplying by powers of 10, I could double these because that's a half there. And I would get a 7. And I can double the 4,000 and get 8,000. And I can double the 500 and get another 1,000. And I can double 64 and get 128. So I've got 9,128 divided by 7. Now at this point, dividing by 7 is probably not necessarily a mental math strategy at this point. But I have a problem that is a little bit more friendly than if I had used a power of 10. If I had used a power of 10, I would have 45,640 divided by 70. Sorry, not 70, 35. Let me fix that there. Multiplied by 10. Would you rather do this problem, or would you rather do this problem? Me personally, single divisors are kind of nice. A uh, quick estimate here, I'm going to say that this is about 9,000 divided by about 10. I'm going to estimate that my answer is about 900. 
And so now I can do 9,128 divided by 7. And I get a calculated quotient of 1,304, which sounds like it's a long ways off, but I have to remember that this 7 is a long ways away from that 10 that I rounded it to. So I'm probably in the ballpark here. It might have been a better estimate to do 9,000 divided by 5. Which would give me a 1,400. But when I'm estimating, I sure like dividing by easy numbers, dividing by 10. I just have to remember when I divide, when I round this 7 right here to be a 10, my estimate is not going to be as accurate. I'm going to be a little bit farther away. So here we've used a hybrid approach. We use some mental math strategy here, doubling things up to get an easier division problem. 9,128 divided by 7 instead of 4,000, sorry, 45,640 divided by 35. Once we got the 9,128 divided by 7, then we just used our regular division. So kind of a hybrid approach here. Mental math and the division algorithm. All right, taking a look at a last example here. Shelley was given this number sentence and was asked to place the decimal point correctly in the quotient. So we've got, whew, what a number. 55 and 6,875 ten thousandths divided by 6 and 75 hundredths. And she has said the answer is going to be 825 thousandths. And the question is, did she get the decimal in the right spot? And I need to explain my thinking. Well, I've got a few different things that, that go through my head. Uh, the first is I don't think she got it in the right spot. And the reason for that is because I'm just doing a quick bit of estimation here. I've got a 55 and a 6. And if I do 54 divided by 6, I'm estimating the quotient should be closer to 9. 825 thousandths is a long ways from 9 when we're working with 54 divided by 6. So I am really thinking here that Shelley didn't do a very good job. Um, something, something went wrong here. And then it says um, I actually have to do the division to prove my answer. So I'm going to, oh how fun, do the division problem here. Um, so I've got 55 and 6, 8, 7, 5 divided by, oh, boy, that is just, that is just a frightening division problem. In real life, we would actually just get out a calculator and work it that way. because it would be way easier if we did that. Way easier. But here we are. So I've got 5,568 and 75 hundredths divided by 675. And I'm going to make a quick chart of 675s for me. Um, I don't have a ton of room for it, so I'm going to write over the top of other things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six hundred seventy-five. And if I double that, I have twelve hundred plus one hundred fifty, and that's thirteen fifty. And I can add and have a little more here. Two thousand twenty-five. Now, if I double the one thousand three hundred fifty. I'll get 2,700 and add a 675 to that, 3,375. And then I can double the 3, so my 2,025 will become 4,050. 
and then I can add 300, three, uh, 675 to that. Uh, let's see, so there's a 5, 7 5 is 12, 1 and 6 is 7, so 4,725. And then I can double the 4, which is 5,400. And then I can add 675 more. Adding 600 gets me to 6,075. All right, so the five, the five, the six, oh, we're clear down here, 5,568. And looks like an eight is where I will want to go because that will give me 5,400. And subtract. And now I'm going to trade in for tenths. I've got 1,687 tenths and I see a two will work well for that. 1,350. And I've got 3,375, which is five. And I've got a calculated quotient then of eight and 25 hundredths. So her decimal was off by one power of 10. All right, so what are the benefits of using mental math techniques when dividing? We looked at so many different quick little strategies to help out, but the end result is that we can take what might be complicated division problems and we can make them a little bit more friendly. They can increase our efficiency. Instead of just always multiplying by a power of 10, we can look for things like doubling and quadrupling. We can look for friendly numbers that are easy to multiply. Um, which mental math techniques work best for me? Um, you know, I, I showed you that I love love fives to make tens. Um, I love twenty five hundredths to make ones. Um, so I guess if I had to say a mental math technique that works best for me, um, I like compatible numbers, numbers that are easy to divide or multiply or add or subtract together. And the other thing that I showed today was breaking numbers apart like the 375 that's split into 360 and 15. Um, easy to find half of this, easy to find half of this, not as easy to mentally find half of the whole thing. 180 and seven and a half, 187 and a half. So I, I really like breaking numbers apart and working with pieces of them. All right, so taking a look at the ICANN statements, I can use mental math strategies to solve for quotients of multi-digit decimals. We wandered through a lot of mental math strategies. Hopefully you are seeing some that you can apply as you encounter problems. Um, don't just get locked into, here's the steps that I follow. Look at each new division problem, each new situation. Look at it new and ask yourself, what strategies do I have that I can apply instead of just getting into, this is what I always do. Unless what you always do is look and say, can I make this friendlier? Um, use powers of 10 to explain where to place the decimal in quotients of multi-digit decimals. Um, and that's, that's using some number sense. That's looking and saying, hey, that was 55 divided by 9 um, or 6. Um, looking at, at numbers and using a little bit of number sense and saying, where does the decimal go? So that concludes Module 2, Lesson 15. Just a, to me, a very fun exploration of mental math. If you've got questions, make sure you talk to your teacher and make sure you complete your problem set. And even more important than that, make sure that you are using your mental math strategies.